What's going on, everybody? Wanted to hop on here today to discuss a major change taking place uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's officially official, basically, um, that Mike Thomas turned the ball over to Russell Wilson this weekend. Uh, he's going to be the starting quarterback for this team uh, against the New York Jets moving forward. Um, I got a lot of thoughts on this topic. I wanted to share those with you guys because I know a lot of you guys have um, DM me on social media. I'm seeing comments on previous videos, all that stuff. I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys, of course, um, but also didn't want this segment to completely take over like the Steelers Jets preview that we're going to do this weekend um, just because it's kind of deserving of its own thing because it's it's a major decision. So I want to talk uh, through just like, you know, how we got here, you know, the thought process behind making this switch um, and where this offense kind of needs to go uh, moving forward. I mean, I don't feel like I have to say this to you guys, especially if you're longtime subs to the channel, all that stuff. But you guys know I'm a, I'm a straight shooter. I always have been. Um, I have really strong opinions. I don't expect you guys to always agree with me on everything. That's OK. I mean, there's people in this building um, that are split on who should be under center. And that's OK. Um, we all want the same thing, which is just, you know, whatever's going to give the team the best chance to win. So just before I get into all of those kind of dynamics, um, please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. Um, and also drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of the decision. Who do you want behind center? All that stuff um, is a free and easy way to support the channel. And I, I just really appreciate it. So um, let's get started here. Uh, I think. We need to start with kind of how we got here. Um, you know, just looking at some of the numbers, Justin Fields, he's 16th in EPA per play. He's 19th in success rate through the first six weeks of the season. Of course, um, a big component of what makes this decision unique is the team is four and two. They're heavily in contention for a playoff spot. If the playoffs were to start today, they would be in uh, in the AFC. Of course, the AFC's a little bit down this year um, overall. But, you know, before the season started, I did. I mean, a plethora of different videos. I mean, obviously, we we spent the majority of, you know, the spring, the summer talking about, you know, Russell Wilson, talking about Justin Fields, talking about Arthur Smith's scheme, how to get these guys and uh, mesh into a competent offense. And I think I've repeated this, I mean, dozens of times, but I, I really thought that going into the season that the Steelers were going to be able to field a competent offense and get competent quarterback play out of whichever these guys ended up being the starter. I think that the general consensus was that it was going to be Russell Wilson to start the season. Of course, you know, the calf injury during training camp, he misses basically all the summer. He plays in one preseason game, re-aggravates that injury. Then Justin, you know, is kind of forced into the lineup for the first six weeks of the season. Um, you know, Honestly, like just evaluating Justin in totality, his play, um, I've done a ton of film rooms on him. But I think the big thing that I was saying, like over the first month of the season, I thought that he had been maybe even a little bit better than what I anticipated him being. Like I thought he was giving them like above average quarterback play, which is great. I mean, you got this dude for a six round pick like these investments that the Steelers made at the position were insignificant. I mean, Russ is on basically a minimum contract. Justin was traded for a day three pick. You get average or solid competent quarterback play out of those investments. That's a win uh, in today's NFL landscape. So, you know, I just think that, you know, you start with really the opener. I thought that Justin made some really big time throws against Atlanta. Some of those ended up being um, in the first two weeks. He had some of his best plays kind of called back uh, due to penalty, which was kind of unfortunate. And then I really thought, you know, the Chargers game in particular, man, like, I mean, I reviewed this in the film room as well, but there was plays in the Chargers game that I can honestly say that I have never seen him make. Um, as someone who has watched Justin play, I mean, I think I've watched every game of his dating back to his rookie season. So basically everything that I had film on, I've watched at least once uh, dating back to his days at Chicago. Like there were plays in that game that he made that I'm just not used to seeing him make. Um, but I thought overall, like over the first month of the season, we saw some like legitimate improvements uh, in Justin's game. Getting the ball out quicker uh, is a big thing. Being more willing um, to, you know, take the check down, play a little bit of a safer brand of football, taking care of the football, not putting it in harm's way, um, protecting himself as a runner, not fumbling the ball in the open field, and, and still also showing off some of the physical gifts that he has, right? Like some of the stuff that he can do as a runner, uh, the scrambling uh, stuff, the quarterback run stuff. And also like, you know, his biggest asset as a passer, in my opinion, is really pushing the ball down the field. Um, so there's there's been good things. Now, if you want to talk about like why the Steelers are making this decision, like the one thing that kind of um, I think stands out with Mike Tomlin's comments to the media um, in his own unique way of kind of giving us insight is, you know, he thinks that Justin has had good moments, but good is not to be confused for great. 
Um, and I kind of want to talk about that process, but I also like want to shine a little bit of a light on why, what I think he's talking about. I just think simply put, um, over the past two weeks, Justin has not performed well as a passer in the pocket. Um, I think that there's been like the last two weeks is not what we saw on film over the first four weeks of the season. In my opinion, um, I broke down um, in the members only section. I broke down every single offensive play from the Cowboys game. I broke down every single throw that Justin made last week um, against the Raiders. I just think simply put, man, he's left too many plays on the table in the pocket. And I think that that is really difficult when you're an offensive coordinator and, you know, you're scheming up certain things and you want the ball to go a certain direction. That player is open and that player is not getting the ball. It's tough. And even last week against the Raiders, like there were some inaccuracy issues that I'm not normally associating with Justin uh, in terms of like being a major weakness within his game. Um, I think that you've seen some of the same things like pop up too, just over the past couple of weeks. Just everything is really slow for him in the pocket. It just like the processing, the everything about him, like the release and just the urgency that he plays within the pocket. Even if you have to acknowledge some of the things that he was even doing last week against the Raiders to cover up some of the mistakes that were being made around him with his legs. Obviously, he's been a huge threat for them in the red zone, putting the ball in the end zone, all that stuff. So um, I think that just as a passer, there have been too many plays like they had some really good looks against some specific coverages against the Raiders. And like, he just didn't put the ball where it needed to go. And I think that that's um, pretty easy to see on film and probably a big reason why they're making the switch. So it just is what it is. I think largely though, I think Justin's been solid. And I think that, you know, him getting the team, helping get the team to four and two is a good thing. Um, but I think the thought process and, and you guys know if like you followed me for a long time on Twitter, YouTube, anything I've wrote like over the years, you guys know, like I'm a huge process guy. So like, even if I don't necessarily, same thing with you guys, really, even if we don't necessarily agree with the decisions being made or the, the reasonings behind those, if I can understand like the thought process behind why you're making those decisions, I honestly won't be like super critical of it because I'll understand that like, Hey, we just agree to disagree. I think the thought process behind what Mike Tomlin is saying is pretty sound for a head coach to make honestly like if you look at it and you just say like okay like why are they making the switch well they think that the offense has been good justin's done some good things they think that they have a better option and russell wilson to take this offense to a different level now we can argue and i'm sure like a lot of people have opinions just like i do on whether that's actually a reality um but i think the thought process behind that is sound like i and i actually think their process surprises me a little bit because they're usually pretty like results oriented and how they do these things. And what I mean by that is like in the past, I just feel like, Oh, this is working. Like we're winning games. Like we think that we should continue to st stick with the status quo. We could get to the playoffs, sneak in, whatever. Like this is clearly a decision that's being made because they think that Russell Wilson can come in and execute the offense better than what it's been executed. And he could take them to a different level, which in turn would make them more dangerous as the season kind of progresses. And as we get into really meaningful football over the second half of the season, when the schedule gets tighter, and then when you get into the playoffs, I think the thought process there and the reason the rationale behind making the switch is fine. Um, now we can argue about the validity of those things and whether that's actually going to become a reality. And that's where I think um, some things kind of worry me a little bit. Um, and the reason for that is I just want to be very transparent about some of the things that are happening on offense that aren't specifically related to the quarterback. Okay. Um, I think that Arthur Smith has been okay ish. Um, there are definitely things that I uh, have not been super pleased about with this, the offensive architecture. I think he's largely been fine though. I just don't think that he is capable of elevating this group to where it really needs to be. Um, but I just think from a personnel perspective, when you're making a switch like this, and it's very clear that what they're after here is an improved passing game. Like they want to be more dynamic through the air because obviously what Justin does as a runner is really not comparable to pretty much anything else in the NFL. Like uh, unless you've got like a Lamar Jackson, maybe even like an earlier Lamar Jackson, something like that, like his ability, how dynamic he is as a runner, not just in the quarterback run game, but as a scrambler, there's just not many guys that could do what he could do. Now, I think as a the passing game is really where they want to see improvements. And I just like look at this thing and, you know, you look at the personnel out there. Um, I mean, there, there's major issues. <laughs> like, like, I don't want to sugarcoat it. Um, and I don't want to like pick on people because I know a lot of these players have received some criticism on social media. And I want to be very careful about how I 
talk about it, but Van Jefferson, like against man coverage, he's just not getting open. Like he just can't separate whatsoever. So anytime he's getting like a one-on-one, I mean, there's a play that they run that Justin actually converts. He makes a nice play on. They're running Y cross. So all Y cross is um, your number two slot receiver to the right side of the screen or right side of the field. He's running this deep over route. And then you'll have a dig route uh, fr- from on backside. Um, basically Justin ends up escaping the pocket. He gets a little bit of pressure. Uh, Dan Moore gets kind of pushed back into his lap a little bit. He rolls left, fires a ball to Calvin Austin. It's a huge, like third and 12 ish conversion or something like that on that play. The Raiders are playing man coverage. They are, they have their post safety. So they're playing cover one man. They have their post safety like past the hash and almost on the numbers over George Pickens because they're like, well, if this ball is going in the air and like, you're not just going to throw a fade over here to 14, we're going to make someone else beat us. And Calvin Austin gets open on that play, which is great, but it's like, it's so disrespectful. You just don't see NFL defenses do that. If you have an NFL caliber starting wide receiver on the other side. And like, even on that play, you can go watch his route. He gets no separation. He doesn't even actually get into the dig route because the, the defender is literally wearing him. And there's just no space. Like he basically stops his route and just says like, Hey, like I can't get open. And that's been a theme over the course of the season. A quarterback switch is not going to help that. Like, I just, I don't like that. This change at quarterback isn't going to help him create separation. Now I think there are things that they could do better offensively to kind of help some of these guys. You can use more motion. You can try to create some, some more advantages with, you know, shifts, rubs, picks, bunches. But, like, you can't make – like, a quarterback change is not going to make Van Jefferson look like a wide receiver, too, or a starting caliber outside receiver. It's just not going to happen. And to be fair to him, I don't think that he was ever really signed here to do that. Like, I think he was signed here with the original thought process of you're going to compete for a roster spot. It's just the mismanagement – from a front office standpoint of the wide receiver room has kind of forced him into a role that he's not, he's just not capable of doing. And that's just the reality of where they're at. There are also other, like the other big issue. I don't think that that necessarily is surprising to in like most people. I don't think that they, anyone had expectations for him coming into the season. It's just the film is it's bad. Um, but speaking of like bad film, like, Roger Jones at right tackle, I it's baffling how poor things have been through the first six weeks of the season. Like if you didn't know anything about the Steelers and you just turned on the Steelers film at right tackle, you would have no idea that this dude is a former first round pick. Like he looks completely lost. And like it's one thing because like I, I even said this a lot over the in the offseason. We did the offensive line preview with Brandon Thorne. Like we talked about Broderick. Broderick's always been this like toolsy kind of guy that's been really raw, really uh, you know, sloppy with his technique. That this was always going to be a multi-year thing and in, in order to get him to play really at the level that you would want from a first round offensive tackle. Like those are all good things. You're still seeing all of those things on film where it's like, you know, his hands are just a complete mess, uh, his feet complete mess still lunging all these different things like i don't think that there's been any improvement at all with anything from a technique perspective which is concerning but also like the mental mistakes like there are multiple like two to three mistakes i would say per week especially over the past month that he's made where he's not off the ball in time he doesn't know if it's pass or run. He has no idea what his blocking assignment is, whether it's in pass protection or in the run department. I mean, there's the play last week against the Raiders where, you know, they come to the line of scrimmage and all four guys on the offensive line are pass setting. Receivers are running routes. Justin's going back there to pass. And Broderick's like moving forward as if he thinks it's a run. And then he kind of gets two yards up beyond the line of scrimmage and looks around and he's like, what's going on? Like, I don't know what to do. And then, you know, not only that, but it's Max Crosby on his side. So Max Crosby, one of the best defensive players in the world, is has a beeline towards the quarterback. Luckily, Justin recognizes it pretty quickly, you know, steps up in the pocket and turns what should be a sack into like a 15-yard gain. So like Justin has had to deal with some situations that have been less than ideal, to say the least. Like those type of mistakes, like those mental mistakes like that, that's how that's how players get hurt. Like that's how quarterbacks get hurt. So it's just, I think that we really have to be honest with ourselves about the environment that we're making this quarterback switch into. And that goes even beyond like some of the other stuff that they're doing. Like 
you know, Scotty Miller's getting real snaps on this team. Like Connor Hayward is playing, like, I don't know how many snaps he played last week, but it was like 60 something percent of the snaps. Like he's getting multiple targets a week. They're designing plays for him. And like, that just doesn't have, like those things are not what you would expect from like good NFL offenses around this, around the league. Now onto the Russell Wilson portion of it. Russ isn't going to, I think, help those things. And those issues may even be, especially with specifically with the offensive line, might be a little bit more exaggerated with him under center. Some of the things that I think Russ can do to help this team is I, I think that he will make the play action pass game better. Um, he's more comfortable under center. Play action passing is like kind of his bread and butter. It's something that he's done extremely well dating back to his days in Seattle. You know, you just look at some of the play action stuff that they've dealt with. I mean, the numbers are so bad. Um, you know, not only has, you know, Justin and, you know, the offense in general really struggled, you know, just under center. Like there's been bobbled snaps. There's been all this different stuff dating back to the preseason. Um, I don't think that you'll see that kind of stuff with Russ. I think that the play action stuff, he's going to be willing to push the ball down the field. Um, he's going to, you know, go where you know, he's going to put the ball where it's supposed to go off play action, provided he gets the protection that he's actually supposed to. So if you're looking for, hey, where are we going to see tangible results? I think that Russ can do those things. And like you can go back. I, I did a film room on Russ the day after he signed with the Steelers that I tweeted out. I think it was yesterday, the day before. You can go back and watch that for like a full breakdown of like his strengths and weaknesses. But in my opinion, if you're one, if you're going to want to be the one of the more play action heavy offenses in the league, um, you need to convert. Like you, you have to take advantage of those opportunities. You want to be extremely run heavy. You have to be able to create those explosives off play action. And they just haven't done it. Like even the last play of the game against the Raiders, I think that you can look at that play. Obviously the game's out of reach. They're just trying to get picking some t touches to keep him happy. Of course, he's like ex been extremely inconsistent this season. He's a mercurial player overall in general, but like you just look at like the play action numbers for the Steelers this year, that ball was underthrown. Pickett makes a good play um, on the last drive of the game, but like, Fields off play action this year, 5.2 yards per attempt, zero big time throws, one turnover worthy play. Like it's just, it hasn't been good. Like there's been other issues with the play action passing game. I think over the first couple of weeks of the season, it wasn't designed as well as I'm used to seeing from an Arthur Smith offense, but there's been guys open over the past couple of weeks. Like that just is what it is. Like he missed Calvin Austin on a wide open crosser against Dallas. That would have been an explosive play and then turned that in. He parlayed that into a turnover worthy, um, turnover worthy play where he like threw the ball right to the safety dropped it for an interception like that was a that was one of those plays that you just you don't see like you shouldn't be seeing in year four you just should um so i think that russ will execute that portion of the offense a little bit better i also saw some like familiar concepts like we talked about like why cross like some of the stuff um that russ does has done well in the way that you designed the offense around him I think you saw that against the Raiders and like some of those plays that Justin didn't necessarily execute the way that I think he probably should have. So the offense is going to look fairly similar because these are two similar ish passers. They're both guys that want to attack outside the numbers. Like they, they have to, um, you know, Justin's a taller dude, but like he doesn't necessarily throw to the middle of the field any more than Russ does. They, they both are vertical passers that attack outside the numbers. That just is what it is. Now, I think one of the things with Russ in quick game, I did see some improvements um, in Denver last year under Sean Payton. So, like, we'll see if that carries over. I think the big, the, the biggest thing that I'm like kind of curious about because I think that we just we have a career long sample size of like what Russell Wilson is as a player. Um, you know what he does well, what he doesn't do well, how how you need to design an offense about it. I've done multiple videos on it. It's just for me, I just want to see like how he looks physically like I have no doubt that everyone says that he's 100% healthy what does that look like as he's you know 35 36 years old whatever it is like can he move like that's the big thing like I think that they wouldn't be putting him into the game if he couldn't execute the bootlegs and do different things um, but like my big thing is like is he capable of still extending outside of the structure of the play? Like I think in Denver, you saw some really good things last year in terms of he looked lighter. He looked a little bit more mobile, more agile, got outside the pocket. That's always like one of the things that Russ has done extremely well, make those special plays on the run. He's a really gifted thrower on the move. Um, can he still do those things? And like, can he mitigate, quick pressures that instead of like turning those into sacks, like he's not probably going to be the scrambler that fields was, but can he do some things out of structure in the passing game? Um, 
you know, that that I think, uh, you know, would would make the offense, you know, a little bit more explosive. We'll see what that looks like. Um, overall, just like my thoughts on the decision overall, it's probably not what I would do. Uh, in fact, I, I, it's definitely not what I would do. I would have probably just stuck with fields. And it really, I want to be clear about this too, because I think there are a lot of people that feel differently about this in particular. Um, my, does, my thought process on should they stick with fields or what, has nothing to do really, really little, very little to do with like next year or anything like that. I just think that he makes the offense a little bit more dynamic with his legs, even while I do acknowledge like he's a limited passer, but I think like Russ is in some similar ways, a limited passer. I just don't know if the personnel, if the scheme, if the fit is necessarily good enough for this offense to be a dynamic passing unit. I don't, I, I have major doubts on like if Russ is going to be able to elevate this unit to a different level. Um, based on who they've got on offense right now. Now, could that change? Could they trade for a wide receiver or, you know, somebody comes along and it just looks better? Um, I obviously hope that that's the case. I hope Russ comes in, lights it up, and, you know, this offense really takes off and they become like a legitimate threat in the AFC. Like, I think that everybody would love to see that. I just am skeptical uh, of that being the case because I think if you're making this decision, like you're, you're basically saying that he's a good scheme fit. Like you feel like you can orchestrate a really – really, really solid uh, to good offense with him under center. Um, and I just, I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the truth. We'll see though. I would have probably just stuck with Justin, wrote it out for him, but it has nothing to do with like evaluating Justin for the future or anything like that. I, I mean, these guys are here cheat on the cheat one year deals. My thought process was just give me competent quarterback play, which they've gotten. Um, give me competent quarterback play for this year. We'll evaluate things next year and beyond about like, hey, are one of these guys the answer? Do we need to go and, you know, get somebody else, whatever. But like, there's no part of this decision that's being made with the thought process of draft capital. It does not matter. Like they don't care about this fourth round pick to Chicago. That's not why they're benching him. Like they, they legitimately think that Russ gives them a better chance to win right now. I don't necessarily care about, you know, Justin necessarily needing to be, you know, back here next year as the starter, what this is going to do to that plan. Like that's just not in my thought process. Like I'm, I'm focused on this year. Like you can tell by every bit of actions the Steelers have made that they are all focused on this year with the quarterback play. And we'll see what the, where that lands. But um, I know that was a lot of words and you can kind of understand why I did not want to do this uh, for the Steelers jets preview. We will see what it looks like. Um, Russ did play against the Jets last year, so I, I'm planning on I'm trying to get another video up for you guys this week, but I'm also planning on trying to watch through that game just to see if I can come up with any nuggets on maybe how they played him or some of the things he did or didn't do against the Jets last year, maybe as a little peek inside of what we should expect on Sunday night. Um, but you know, per usual, I will have hopefully one more video this week, maybe tomorrow, um, and then I will have a preview up on Saturday morning. So um, just as a quick reminder, please make sure that you check out our channel sponsor, Homage. A lot of new designs up on their website. I will put that link in the description. Um, and if you are interested in even more like X's and O's, detailed, uh, unique kind of film room type stuff, please make sure that you check out the membership section. Um, the price of a small coffee, like I said, uh, did a stream for like an hour and a half a couple weeks ago. Um, I broke down every throw that Justin had against the Raiders. So if you guys want to see some examples of like what I was talking about with um, being just a little bit underwhelmed with his performance, uh, you can go check that out as well. So um, as always, please make sure that you enjoy the rest of your week. I appreciate your all support. Peace and love.